Okay, good shape. So golden zone, so my hands are onto the shoulders and onto the hip line from here. One of the biggest things that I see people do is this is when they're bridging, if they plant their feet, the distance for Big Jake to step his right leg over onto mount or knee right is a really short distance. So one of the things I want to do from here is I want to create a larger distance which allows my hips to roll in. This means my elbow can come up so I can start to replay. As I've mentioned before, is this is a really bad position because if he knee smashes or hip smashes my leg down here, I can just simply pass my guard and my hands in a really bad position. So from here, the golden zone, so we're on the shoulders and the hips. From here, create a larger area, so this makes it hard for him to switch base and step over. So one, two, roll my leg and hip down, roll my elbow, frame, push him with my right hand as well, three frame, reinsert, and we'll come back in. So we're trying to get this position. At this stage here, don't sit up, stay on your back. The reason being, if I sit up, he can now push my legs to the side, my body, and he can then shake the guard pass. Where if I'm staying flat on my back, he initiates the guard pass, it's hard for him, so he's going to actually try and push my legs to the side. Once he pushes, I can now start the arm drag, and I can now get access to the back and the choking. Things like that as well. How cool is that? Okay, so, <laughs> from here one more time. Really important, guys. Golden zone, we're going to deal with the hands on the outside. So first of all is make sure that we're not pushing with our hands. Elbow, tension, okay. One, two, kick and roll. Elbow, 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 turn, right hand frame. So my right hand's framing on the hip as well. Reset, swing on the inside, push. Now, I do try and bring my left leg in first. That will now need to get my hook to be able to play from here. If I'm ready, I can now start to distance range to sit up if I need to sit up. Okay, one, two, three. This is one of my favorite ways of recovering to the butterfly guard uh, or hook sweep. Um, once again, your hands in the golden zone, but where we're gonna cut a little bit of space. This takes a little bit of play time, and I need to make sure that I'm, my, I'm up on my body, or up on my partner, not down, I'll explain. So, side control again, inside the golden zone, so we're here. So what I wanna do is, I like, I've, I've moved to the side, and I'm framing, but he's really, like, re I'm having a lot of issues but like, trying to get this space. And I definitely can't bring my leg on the inside, like he's, he keeps following me with, with the right leg. Okay. So one thing I want to do from here is, really important is, as I turn around, is I drop my, I drop my leg down, I bring my left leg over. That way I still have hook. So that even if he drops his right hip down, I still have my hook onto the inside position. Right. This enables me to start to like, get my sweeps, and to control the position. So even though it takes a little bit more time, this one's a nice a little hook sweep off, off the side control. So the part that I see people do is they try and bring their hook under or they try and bring their hook through. So as I'm trying to bridge, he's really strong and I'm having issues. Well, that generally means is that he's planted onto the ground because he's got a really good base and really, really hard to move. And that means that if I move, it's harder for him to follow me. Okay, not always. Okay, so one, two, keep my leg, my leg comes through. Once I'm here, frame, and I do like to come over and under from here. You can take the underhook as well, but he gets head control, so I wouldn't try and deny head control. So if Tony does try and grab my head, I've got the inside position on both, and as I try to grab it, this will give me this ability to sweep and to come to the top position. How about you? Easy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I So the part that um, the part that I see people have issues with is uh, my hip line. I have to bring my hip line up because if I try and get my foot in here, see how my foot's behind his his knee line? It's just really hard to do. So as I'm kind of going one and two, I'm kind of pushing up, and that creates a space between the elbows and the hip line. So I'm kind of moving this way. The frame system. So to get my leg over, if my knees face in the ceiling, I can't get my leg. My knees face in the ceiling. So what I like to try is I like to try and roll my leg down and that will allow my hook to come on the inside. I do like to get the overhook to not head control and do like to get the hook on the side. So a marshal does try to get towards my head, he'll come up and that's how I get the ability to start to strike my partner because his weight will come forward trying to head control because I'm underneath him, it's easier to manipulate him. And if he doesn't come forward, we'll just simply escape and we're in an overhook butterfly guard anyway, which is a really good position. One, two, three. So, um, what generally happens is we're on the cross face circle. If you guys come around, yeah, this side you'll see. So, Tony's in the golden zone, so he's got the, the two frames from here. One of the first things that I see when people start doing this is if I'm facing Tony's face, Tony's elbow is behind my neck. So, anytime that Tony lifts his elbow, he's pushing my head forward. So, I'm going to turn my head that way. So, now I should lift his elbow. 
the weight to so it's just I just changed the, the weight so anytime that I'm facing forward his weight backside and he can manipulate where I'm facing forward it's front side so it's hard not not impossible but it's just a bit harder to do so first thing I want to do is from here is I turn my head this way everyone wants that okay now watch carefully as it starts to frame is I drop my hip pick up the arm and I go to switch base forwards so this is where I want to be. This is a far better position. As long as I've kept the elbow off the ground, one of the things that happens is Tony's generally going to try and turn towards me. So as long as I pick the arm up, it's really hard for him to turn to try and risk a guard or do what we've just done. So if Tony does take the two steps out, strands his leg and tries to put me in the guard, I've got this ability to keep him pinned. A lot of people start to move the hips and try and compromise by putting the weight here. Oh, sorry. If, if I simply keep the, uh, the arm lifted and I put a wedge underneath it, if Tony tries to turn towards me, it's, it's very hard to do, and the arm bars and that are a lot easier to do as well. So from here, what we're going to do is, is flat chest to chest side control. First things first is that I switch my hips, uh, my head towards the end of the elbow. As it lifts up, okay, so under and here, cut below the elbow, pick it up, slide in the valley and sit to here. It's almost like Kizukatami, but I have the arm in front. Most people now are going to try and frame, so I'm going to get a, a C grip on the arm, and all I'm doing, I don't, I don't lift my hips, is I just lift the arm up and slide my hips under. If I lift my hips, I come over, he can slide me left, right, push me right, yeah, exactly right. So keep the hips low, and I'll try and slide underneath it so that his shoulder's up off the ground. This means that he's got two options, which is sit up or move that way. Most people, are going to, most people try and sit up, they won't, Mm -hmm. Then they'll start to move that way. It creates distance for me now to hit the arm bar because the arm becomes that extension. Do you want to see that, Tony? Yeah, I'll see it once. Okay, Marshall. So, once again, is we're in the golden zone, so Marshall's got his hand for me. Anytime that my hand's facing forward, if he lifts his elbow up, he can manipulate me. I turn my head to the backside, lift his elbow up. <laughs> yeah, so, and it's not even that hard on my face, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a different way. So as it starts to lift up for me, I go underneath, scoop, grab the arm, switch as deep as I can underneath it and drop my hips nice and low. What most people are going to try and do now is try and sit up. So as long as my head's forward, which is very hard, they're doing exactly now, so they start to try and move away. As long as I've kept the elbow above my leg line, I'm okay. When I'm ready, watch carefully, I lift my hips, turn, step, and here's your armbar. I don't have to grab the arm. If, I, if I'm stepping, I need to move my hand from here because sometimes it's really hard to step over because your own hand's in the way. So what I find is I prime it and here. So here, prime it. This will also mean that my partner, if they do realize that they're in an armbar, they do go to turn the armbar, I have the ability now to hit the Kimura on the opposite side. One, two, three. So this is the arm bar. Um, so I've gone to the position where um, this is really important, getting this deep so that his frame system's up and null and void. I don't want to be here where I'm behind the frame system. So I roll my shoulder and that helps punch it up, get it, come through so I'm nice and tight. One of the things I see people do is, um, the I, I guess it's, it's not wrong, but can you repeat it? They throw the head backwards and they try to throw the arm on and Tony just sits up and I can I lose the whole arm up. So part of it is that once I'm here and I've got the arm compressed is I start to do a hip escape away. This can be done two ways. Normally for Tony, he wants to escape. So he will start to hip escape away from me and he'll do it for me. So the arm's now front. And that's the most common reaction that you're going to get is, is they're going to try and do this, which means that his arm's now full extension. If my partner doesn't do that, then I just simply go one and two. I'll try and make sure that my knee never ever goes below the shoulder. So if Tony does try to turn towards me, my knee line's still there. If I find it's below, he can actually get his shoulders. Yes, right, okay, so my knee line stays here. This is the hardest part about the entire movie. No worries, I'm always elbow pinching, hand in front. Don't take your hand behind yet. Hand in front, okay. So put all your weight onto your right elbow and swing your right elbow to his hips. So I'm onto his hips. So if Tony does hip escape now, I'm on the hips. Wherever I find if I'm here and he hip escapes, he can, yeah, like it changes my whole base. So number one is your right elbow, onto the hips. Number two is this, try and take your head over your shoulder, and that by default would turn the arm here. Now, this makes this really easy, and it's pretty much on already. So what I see people do is they're here, and they'll try and step over, but this is quite an awkward mechanic. So squeeze, right elbow goes backwards, 
turn to your right and raise your hips. So I know that the arms are flexed, like I know that this will come on right now. So step from here. Now, instead of me moving, watch what, the, are you okay there, Tony? Yeah, I'm good. My heel starts to drag his head in. So he can't bridge properly or move because I've compromised his whole spine. Where what I see people is they go, I raise my hips, raise my hips, and you always see my whole body weight's gone. Where if I'm here and I start to slowly just drag this backwards, it's a far better mechanic. So it's kind of like on the neck and on the shoulders mm -hmm. and things like that as well. Um, that way I'm not compromising my base to attack here. Let's have a shot, guys. One, two, three. Feel the difference on that? The two variables from the solution. Um, variable one is generally done when the person's got longer arms than me or I'm shorter than them and I'm having trouble maintaining that, that, that pinch on the arm, the side control, because I've got long frames. And the second one is if I'm having trouble finishing the arm bar. So, looking back. Um, long arms, pain in the butt. <laughs> the only good thing about having long arms for me is that I can arm bar them. But you can keep me at bay behind the frame, and your frame system, like my frame system's that long, your frame system's that long. So, you know, but I guess the downfall about it is your legs long, so to bring your legs. There's pros and cons about everything from here. Um, your ability should be working triangles and guard. Be a nightmare to pass long legs, man. Like, you know, open legs, open legs, you know, you're three kilometers out from the guard, and the guard still closed. You're like, man, why won't you open your legs? So, when I started to do this, um, I teach the kids this because uh, this is a really common thing that happens with the kids but it happens with adults as well. Okay, so I'm flat from here. I turn my head to the side. Uh, it frames from here, so frame, go side under, pick up the base form, and his elbow comes on the inside. So he's got this elbow. So I'm like trying to get to the inside here. I'm like, man, this guy's got like, and I'm, I can't get the head control, and I don't want to step over because the distance is too far. So, so this, the first lever, the shoulder to the elbow, the first lever is on the inside, and I'm having trouble, yep. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same system, guys, is I backstroke, boom, be right and just step through. So because he's got a longer frame system, I don't have to go under the armpit. So anytime that he's pushing, or like, you know, this one's, and I'm like, man, I'm trying to get on the inside position. So as he pushes, backstroke, knee slide, and the arm bar stop, keep the elbow pinched behind. So anytime that they're long arms or you can't beat the, the inside frame system, we we'll take what we call baseball slide knee ride. So I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to knee ride here, I'm just trying to punch my knee through the armpit. So I've got the position again, and the frame, and I can, I'm trying to fight this frame system like, man. So the biggest thing is to help wreck the frame system, turn, so see how the frame system opens. Slide and extend the arm through, pinch. I've taken up knee, and now hold the hips as you sit down. So it disables his ability to hip escape. The arm's at full extension, and now I just treat it as a traditional arm bar. How'd that feel? Yeah, yeah. I didn't really like the knee across the chest too much, but yeah, the arm felt fine actually. To yep. I'm very light. <laughs> okay, so this, uh, try and get out of the habit of this. Try and get, out the, try and get into the habit of this. That's, uh, you can actually feel your arm can move a lot more than the pinch. Frame system on the inside, I'm here. So that to turn the hips. So the only way, you see how his knees are turned the way I want them to move? So. It feels like it's slipping off. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm wrecking your frame system as well. Okay, slide, punch it through, step over, sit down, hold the hips. Well, the beautiful thing about it is if I do lose the arm bar, I haven't lost my, I'm still in the same position again, like I don't lose anything. Okay guys, one, two, three. And um, the combination once again is I'm in the control position. Um, he's got the frame system, so he's beating me to the frame system, I'm trying to command us. So I run my hips, pick up the arm, swing on the inside, and I'm here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the baseball slide, but unfortunately I miss the arm. Uh, for whatever reason, my, it's generally because my legs are too veed. So if they're tighter, it's harder for him to pull out, but if I'm, but yeah, so they're open. So as I go, baseball pulls it out, I'm like, man, I've lost the position. So what we're gonna do now is this here and this, I take my shoulder to my hand and I take my knee to the ground. I take my shoulder to my hand, I take my knee to the ground. And I have the Kimura. So it's a really fast Kimura. Uh, it, it works because his frame system is in the way. So if his frame system isn't in the way, I'll get the armbar. 
So, you know, oh, so I'm here. So as I pick it up, I'm here and he pushes him like that. Okay, so now, first of all, shoulder to compress. So the arms are the equation. When I roll down, the arms pinch. I have the attack from here. So this is a really nice way to get that. Come on, how'd that feel? Yeah, pretty, pretty shitty, eh? He wants yeah, to, I'm, to, I'm yeah. after that, yeah. So kind of like yeah, pinned, yeah. Well, well, it's called pinning, so I'm kind of yeah. pinning the arms to the side where you can't use them. So once again, I pick it up, frame, miss it from here. So first things first, crush to isolate the arm. Okay, so pin, step if you want to, and you should come on. Even if he rolls the hands backwards, with your top hand from here, roll your fingers down, don't push it down. So when I'm here, if I roll my fingers, feel the difference on that? Yeah, it's almost on already. Yeah. yeah, so don't just hold it, roll your fingers like that, that song, turn down for what? Right, so turn down, top hand, turns down, and the kimura comes on. One, two, three.